I've looked around to see if this next guest is in a Hall of Fame. Can't find one. Michael Bratton joins us. Michael, uh, did, I, did I miss the Hall of Fame? Uh, your you know, University of Tennessee Hall of Fame, uh, Cousin Shane Hall of Fame, where? I'm more likely to be in a Hall of Shame than a Hall of Fame at this point, Paul. I, it was a week ago when we, we got to Destin, and, and I, I mean, there were so many media members there. Some significant, some looking for table scraps like a, like a dog at a homeless shelter, but I never saw you and Cousin Shane. I need an explanation. Well, I'm not sure the SEC is comfortable with uh, Shane or I at, a, at an event like that. Only prestigious media members that uh, cover programs that are not even in the league yet are getting down there as opposed to uh, the highest rated SEC show that goes daily. But that's neither here nor there, Paul. Maybe one day you can pull some strings and get us down to Destin. I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, there, there was plenty of room right by our, our, our beachhead. I mean, we, I mean there, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of room on that beach. for you, you and Cousin Shane should have just shown up on your own. Well, we take up a lot of room. So I, I don't know if you've got quite the space for us. Uh, but, hey, more, we're more than willing to go. To, but it sounds like uh, all they wanted to talk about was laws and this, that, and the other, which, uh, quite frankly, Paul, none of that really interests me. By the way, I've, I've, I've always been a great admirer, Michael, of your, your bookshelf. And I just noticed a new entrant uh, on that bookshelf. And it's not Steve Spurrier's book, and it's not Mike Leish's book. But uh, it shows you you have very good taste, either that or considering the book is now 10 years old, you got it for a quarter at a, a rummage sale. Right. Oh, yeah. No, it's these are the books I can afford, Paul. So yours is up there. Michael, let's get right to it. Uh, we're going to talk about Ole Miss in a few minutes. Uh, are they a playoff team? Are they? And not only are they a playoff team, Paul, I think they're a national championship contender. So this FPI putting out their list and Ole Miss not even them in the top 10. I, I would put Ole Miss as the second best team in the Southeastern Conference heading into this season. Now, can Lane, I call him Lane Whiffin for a reason. He can't win a big game to save his life. He won one last year. We'll give him credit for that. But uh, if Ole Miss does not make the playoff, I mean, I, I don't think we're crazy enough in the SEC to fire a coach for, for not making the playoff these days. But everything he's built for, if they don't make the playoff, it, it's on Lane Kiffin. So I think he can make the case. I, I know we could talk Napier. We could talk Sam Pittman. But there's not a coach that's facing more pressure than Lane Kiffin this year with the roster he has coming into the season. Well, I mean, Michael, there's a reason why you have the number one podcast in the SEC, because that is the most interesting take. Everybody else's usual suspects, uh, Lane Kiffin being praised, uh, and, and you are praising him. Uh, I mean, you just got through saying he's a contender, but it would be, it would be a, quite a drop-off uh, because, I mean, this is the year. I mean, how many times do we have to say this? It seems like – He's been at this pressers a few times, but but he'll never be in a better spot, will he? No, and that's why it's so fascinating with NIL, with transfer portal. Can Ole Miss annually be a playoff team? I, I don't know, but that's a question for a different day because with the roster they have, they should be contending, again, not for a playoff, for a national championship, and I think Missouri's in the same boat. Now, will these alumni, these donors, will they keep paying if, if Ole Miss falls short, if Missouri falls short? I doubt it. So th there's a lot of, uh, you know, all, all the chips are in, so to speak. But if they don't get there, it's, it's on Lane Whiffen. <laughs> Michael Bratton with us here on the program. Uh, you, yeah, I, I'm assuming you have Georgia number one. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think that's a safe assumption. So if Ole Miss is number two, who's next? I got Ole Miss two and then probably, you know, Texas. I love what I'm hearing from Sarkeesian. Again, he's another one that I kind of question how good of a coach he really is. Uh, he's surrounded himself with, with elite talent. They're number one in N NIL. Uh, Paul, you, you talk to people down at A&M. You know, they, they were the school of NIL. Now they're, they're complaining about how much Texas is spending in NIL. So Texas is ready to come in this league, make, a, make some noise. But I'm not quite sold on Texas being that national championship contender type team. Alabama I got right there for. Uh, and like I said, Missouri, I, th I think Missouri's number five in the SEC. But I think the schedule that Missouri has is going to lend itself to getting to the SEC championship. So I think I've said that before on your show. I, I like Georgia and Missouri to play in the SEC championship game. Yeah, Missouri uh, has a favorable schedule, and I think that is some reason why you're going to hear more as we get to uh, the SEC meetings here in a couple weeks. I presume you'll be in Dallas, right? Uh, th that one they have, they've allowed me to come to that, okay. yes. Okay, we have Missouri's schedule up there, and, and really, uh, 
Murray State, Buffalo, and Boston College to begin. I mean, is that even uh, is that even fair? And then, by the way, UMass later on. I mean, uh, who came up with this non-conference schedule? Cousin Shane. <laughs> well, and uh, good news for Missouri. You're getting it again next year, essentially, with uh, the the lazy SEC scheduling. But again, all you got to do, you got Bama, you got Oklahoma, and you got A&M. If you can win two of those, you're in the playoff. And I think you may even have, uh, again, you may win the entire SEC. I'm, I'm not ready to say Missouri's on, on Georgia's caliber by any means, but who knows? Stranger things have happened, Paul, where Kirby, and, you know, screws up in Atlanta, and, and it could happen again. I remember a couple of years ago, I, I don't know what the deal between uh, the University of Missouri and Boston is, uh, even though University of uh, Massachusetts is in Amherst. Uh, but they went. I think they went up to Boston College a couple of years ago and lost, or somebody up there. I mean, they lost a game in in the state of Massachusetts. Okay, so you you, you give me five, and I still haven't heard uh, the great Brian Kelly, uh, Josh Heupel. I mean, where are these? Uh, is, is that just shows you how difficult the SEC is now? Oklahoma, where are where are those three uh, located in your uh, in your list? Yeah, well, well, certainly some someone's got to emerge, right, Paul? We, and that's the difficulty in finding it. But LSU, I don't get the love with LSU. Now, I, I love the additions Brian Kelly made on his defensive staff to to overhaul them because they were so awful. But when you have the Heisman Trophy winner and you got two first-round receivers and you lose three games, how in the world are they going to get any better, e even if they are marginally or, or even – significantly better on the defensive side of the football they're going to take a, a big step back on offense so i don't get the lsu love i don't think they're a playoff contender um now they will be in in probably about two years but it, but again we're going that would be year four for brian kelly uh tennessee's got the pieces but a, a lot of it's on nico and, and the defensive backs which has been an issue seemingly for three seasons now in knoxville so they could get there i think oklahoma's the one to watch paul and then I think the ultimate wild card in the SEC is Texas A&M. Finally have a competent coach down there, Mike Elko. We get Jimbo Fisher. I don't care what we had to pay. He's going to be invaluable given the fact he's no longer in College Station. I think Texas A&M finishes better than Texas this year in the SEC. Tell me I'm wrong. I, I, I just have to hear that one more time. You, you just got through saying to us that Texas A&M will finish higher than the University of Texas? Yeah, yeah. Give me both around probably 9-3, and 10-2 and two type, but I think it's the difference is going to be in College Station late in the season, last game of the regular season, the game that uh, you know that state's been waiting over a decade plus for. The fact it's in College Station – I like the edge, Texas A&M. I think Texas is severely overrated because of what they did in the Big 12 last year. They had three meaningful games last year, and they essentially lost two of them. So uh, I'm, I'm not all in on Sarkeesian like everybody else. Okay. Um, if I could get outside of the SEC for just a moment. Uh, we talked about the FPI a minute ago. How important a year is this for Ryan Day at Ohio State? Yeah, I mean, he better not lose to Michigan. You know what, Paul? I mean, I, I'm kind of curious to know, uh, uh, you know, why he's still the head coach up there. I mean, Michigan <laughs> wins it all. They go all in on NIL. I mean, it's a similar approach to Ole Miss, but they shouldn't have to do that to win that conference, to win uh, a national championship with the with the quarterbacks and receivers they've had up there in recent years. But he's a joke. Bird, born on third base, as they say. I mean, I don't even know if that's – that's that's probably being too kind to Ryan Ryan Day, given to uh, Urban Meyer about to go into the Hall of Fame. It sounds like, and he's just taken over. He's taken over that program and kind of driven it into the ground where Michigan's now supplanted them out of uh, the Big Ten. Okay, listen, I, I'm I'm not going to be an Ohio State sycophant here and, 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 and come at you with, with because I, I frankly believe that he he ha, he has underachieved, um, and we all know. You know what I love though, uh, Michael when you'll make a statement like that in some Ohio State bubble will call and say, well, do you know, like, like you don't know what Ohio State has done the last six or seven years? Right, yeah, they've come up short in every big-time uh, game. I'm well aware of all of that, Paul. Well, Michael, uh, listen, uh, we haven't had this hot of a start since uh, Cousin Shane was uh, our first guest a couple <laughs> of years, months ago. So uh, great to have you on. Uh, this is, I mean, it's only, what, June 3rd? This is what we have to look forward to as long as we're able to uh, – 
make contact with you and, and somebody doesn't uh, <laughs> blot your signal out. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gearing up for media days. This is this is me on level two. I'm, I'm, I'll be at 10 down there in Dallas. We cannot wait. Michael Bratton starting us off here on 